Hey guys, Andrew here with another quick clip and in this short video, I'm going to be talking all about making canvas panels. I'd like to dedicate this clip to Corey, Christopher and Cecily. Thanks very much guys for hitting me up with this week's request. Let's get started. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. One of them is not really considered the archival or proper way, but it's a good way to produce some really quick, small study panels that are great for sketches or even on plein air paintings. Now I take some dressed pine. This is about six millimeters, so it's not really gonna warp or move too much. And this has actually got a really nice smooth surface to it. So I can glue linen directly to this. Now I don't paint on the plywood itself, to me, I like the surface of canvas or linen, so I'm gonna adhere that directly to this surface. Now this linen comes pre-primed. It's incredibly smooth. Only a little bit of that texture is gonna show through the brushwork. So it's great for really fine, small paintings with a lot of detail. Great for little tiny works. It's really good for on plein air studies as well. So I'll be using this stuff to make my panels. Now, once I have these panels cut to side, it's time to coat them with some sort of adhesive to stick that linen to the surface. And what I'm using is standard PVA glue. Now, PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. It's a really common woodworking glue, and it can be great with all sorts of different applications. It's fantastic here for gluing that linen to the surface. But remember, I did say that this is not really the archival way of doing it. It's just a way to knock out some quick study panels for you to get on with painting on plein air or in the studio. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to cut my piece of linen to size to fit this panel exactly. Now, remember I did say that this is not really the archival nor the best way to do this. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But once we cut this to size, it's then time to adhere that linen directly to the board. I smooth it out the best I can and then I check my edges. After the glue has completely dried and I've got good adhesion with the linen, often what can happen is we can get a little bubble along the, the edge here. To address that bubble, we simply just flick a little bit of glue in there with the ends of some bristles and then push it down again. And normally with two different passes, it works really well. Now on the back side, the back of a piece of wood like this is gonna be hungry for moisture. It's literally gonna wick it out of the atmosphere and cause this panel to warp. So to counter that, we gotta seal the back side with something. I use a, an acrylic binder called GAC 100 for this, which is great. It just soaks into that wood grain and it really seals that surface well. And it still retains a little bit of that wooden texture if you want that wood showing through on the back side. Now I've got three thicknesses to the boards that I'm using. This is a three mil ply. It's nice to work with, but it tends to warp and move a little bit too much on me. This one here is a little bit better, six mil ply, nice and stable, it's not gonna warp too much. And this here is a composite board. Uh, here in Australia, it's called MDF. I'm sure you'd be able to find an equivalent. You could even use masonite. Now I don't recommend this at all, unless you can find one that's sealed on the back side, because this is very hungry for moisture. I even had an art restorer tell me off saying that this is absolutely absolutely not archival at all. So it's a really good way to knock out a cheap and nasty uh, panel if you want to use this for studies, but probably not recommended for final paintings that you wish to sell. Now with these panels, there is a real danger point that you need to be aware of. Whenever the adhesive soaks into the back of that linen, it actually shrinks the linen down smaller than the edge of the board, which means if you've pre-cut your linen when it's loose, like I have, it's gonna shrink in past the edge, exposing a wooden edge. We don't necessarily want that unless the rebate of your frame of the finished article is going to actually cover up that raw edge. So, as I mentioned, there is a much better way to do this in a way that will give you a really slick edge and something really archival that you can then turn around and sell. Let's get started on that one. Now here, I've got a beautiful panel, nice and smooth, archival quality, reinforced on the back side with a really slick, clean edge. What I'm gonna do is take this panel and cut around this panel with a little bit of extra linen around the side, taking into account for some of that shrinkage that's going to occur. And then I'm going to paint some archival PVA directly on this surface. Now the difference with the archival PVA is that we're not gonna get any yellowing or cracking 
or any risk of disadhesion at all. It's really good stuff. It's a very stable binder. So once I've painted the surface, I then put that linen down and smooth it out. Being sure not to rub directly on the surface, I put down a sheet of baking paper as a mask. This allows me to then take a canvas wedge, which is a little wooden straight edge here that you've seen me knock into the back of some of my canvases, and then I just scrape out from the middle out towards those edges, getting rid of all those air bubbles. I then flip this over and I cut around the edge with a brand new blade. Now it's really important that I use this because it's going to allow me to get a really nice clean cut. Once I've cut the edge and I've got this thing ready to go, I just go and check those edges really carefully to make sure that there's no bubbles that have come up. If there are bubbles, then all I do is feed a little bit of glue into the edge and then just smooth that down again. Now, Christopher wants to know about staining the canvas, and many of you would have noticed that I don't work over a stark white surface. I always prepare the surface first before I start painting. The reason for this is I feel, personally, that I have to overcome that white from the outset, and it seems to leach all of the color, vibrancy, and vitality out of my initial block and layer. I want a color to be able to react with. You would have known from the Southwest Seascape that I worked on a surface that looked a lot like this, and some Sometimes my portraits I work on near black. Now the reason for this is that's the color that's going to show through my brushwork and this is going to add a richness and a vibrancy to the colors that I layer over the top. So how do we mix it? What we do is we take a jar that's dried and ready to go. I'm going to use an alkyd resin for my initial ground layer and this alkyd resin normally is Liquin Original. I mix a little bit of pure gum turpentine into this and then add some paint. So I can choose then at this stage, which color do I want to use as my ground? Let's say it's burnt sienna. So I put in a little bit of that burnt sienna, add a little bit of hardware to it, which you've seen me drop in some screws and some bolts and things, and then give it a good shake. Now the point of putting the hardware in this salsa jar is that as I shake and swish that jar around, it actually stirs up the bottom and dislodges all those lumps of paint so I can get a nice homogeneous fluid mixture. Once we have this fluid mixture ready to go, it's time to paint it over the surface of our canvas panels. What I do is I brush this on as flat and thin as possible without building up too much excess of this liquid. And then I wipe it off, just staining the surface, and then leave that up to dry, which should take about 24 hours before you're ready to get on with painting. Well, there you go, guys. That's how I make canvas panels. I've shown you two different ways here, the cheap and nasty way, which is great for studies in your studio or on plein air sketches, and another way, which is great for an archival method to give you a really slick product, something that you can sell and be proud of. Guys, if you haven't already, check out my latest portrait painting tutorial, available as a DVD and download. And for a limited time, I'm giving away the Stockman for free with every portrait tutorial purchased. To activate your promo code, simply subscribe through www.andrewtischler.com. Well guys, if you like what you saw, hit that like button. If you want to come back for more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, you can catch me on Instagram and Facebook. But also, make sure you're subscribed through andrewtischler.com for bonus content and giveaways. We'll see you again next time.